Can you imagine what it's like to be stuck in a situation for 100 days? All right, this is 2021 and we're stuck in a pandemic. Back in ancient Korea, a tradition known as pegil, meaning 100 days, was observed. This meant that a newborn child had to stay quarantined for 100 days, along with the mother, the father, the grandparents, and the many siblings. This was due to the fact that most babies did not make it to 100 days because Korea was a poor rural country with high rates of malnutrition and poor medical treatments available. And so the assumption was that if a baby can make it to 100 days, then it can live for the next 100 years. Now, the question comes to mind, what do you do for 100 days? Well, three things occur. Number one is to rest and recover. Childbirth was often a very traumatic process, especially for the mother and the child. This was due to the fact that maternal mortality rates back then were very high, meaning the mother often died during pregnancy or even during childbirth. And so to accommodate for that extreme exhaustion, she often stayed in bed rest up to 21 days after the birth. For the baby itself, after being in that safe and warm environment in the womb of the mother, has now been pushed forth into the harsh, disease-ridden world. And so both the baby and the mother will rest and recover their strength. The second thing that occurs is to grow and to strengthen. Now, human beings are one of the most helpless animals on earth, especially at birth. They can't defend themselves, they can't feed themselves, they can't really communicate with each other, and they can't really provide for themselves overall until the age of adolescence. Or as my mom likes to say, even till the age of 24. Now, for the mother and the baby, through this period of growth and strengthening, they have to learn through trial and error that what they like, what they dislike, what works for them, what doesn't work for them, so that they can readily be available to help the baby grow and to strengthen past that 100th day mark. And so this type of ordeal was actually not without the support of the many family members that they had, which brings us to point number three, to bond and to unite. Now the sole goal of the other family members is to ensure the survival of the baby to the 100th day and past that. And some of the things that they did was that number one was to accommodate for the fact that because a mother was busy with the pregnancy and the childbirth, they had to divide her daily labor up amongst themselves. The second thing that occurred was that because now there is a newborn baby in the family, they have to accommodate for another mouth to feed, especially back then where Korea was very poor. Another thing that occurred was that the baby had to learn to communicate its needs and its wants to its mother um, through the cries and later on through talking. And the mother had to understand when the baby was communicating to her what they wanted. And so all three of these entities um, and the support of the many family members have to bond and unite together so that it will ensure that the baby will grow healthy and strong. And so then the baby finally makes it to its peggy. Then the entire village can come together and celebrate the introduction of the baby to the new world. Currently, it seems very counterintuitive to be stuck in a situation for 100 days or long term. Society often demands that we work hard, we succeed, and that we're always ahead. But when we can't meet up with these demands, we often feel very frustrated and disheartened. This is known as an impasse, a state characterized by an absence of motion or of progress. An impasse, we might feel as if it is detrimental to what we have hoped and dreamed for. We get that feeling of being stuck as something that is bad and often feel as if that everything that we have been accomplishing up to now is for nothing. But however, according to Timothy Butler, senior fellow and director of career development programs at Harvard Business School, most people at one time or another feel as if they are just spinning their wheel, unable to gain traction either in career or in life. This feeling of being stuck in one place while troubling is a necessary crisis leading to personal growth. What we thought was a sinking stone for our roadmap was actually a cornerstone for immense personal and professional growth. 
Rather than think that an impasse is where all dreams come to die, think of it as a potential for a growth modifier because it will be a place where you can learn so much things about yourself without having to focus on what I need to do next. And so when you do change your mentality to focus that an impasse is a potential for a growth modifier, the question may come up, well, what do you do for 100 days or during an impasse? Just like the tradition of Pegir, three things occur. Number one, rest and recover. Mamba mentality, as coined by our beloved late Kobe Bryant, is a mentality where from the moment you're awake to the moment you go to sleep, you are focused and driven on your goal 100% of the time. Now, this mentality is excellent to have, but even the world's best athletes know the importance of proper rest. For myself, I'm an enthusiastic workaholic. I truly love to work, and even though I do plan my rest, I often spend that time planning for the things I have to do next. And I thought this mentality was very healthy because it meant that I was driven and that I was focused on the goals that I wanted. So there shouldn't have been any problems, right? Actually, this led me to a state known as burnout, where I felt that I wasn't cut out for the career that I wanted to set out, as well as questioned all my self-worth. According to Psychology Today, Around 50% of the United States population has experienced burnout at least once in their life. Now, this data doesn't really tell us how long a burnout lasts per person, nor does it tell us how detrimental a burnout can be. For some people, a burnout can mean a detour in their life, whether they didn't get the job that they applied for or they just had failed a test they studied for. But for some people, it can mean the difference between pursuing their goals and completely giving up. For myself, when I was in that burnout, I truly questioned whether I was cut out for what I wanted to do. I often felt I wasn't smart enough, I wasn't skilled enough, and I wasn't good enough because I felt every time I focused on my work, none of the things that I wanted to do, I couldn't do because my body and my mind was just so exhausted. For a lot of us, I'm sure we're at a point or we might get to a point where we are questioning our self-doubt and questioning whether we should continue on with what we had planned. But this actually is due to the fact that most of us do not know how to properly rest. For myself, because my brain was always on, when I tried to give my 100% on the project, it was impossible because at capacity, I could only give 20 to 30% of the time because I had never properly rested. And so for a lot of us, we need to learn to properly rest and to recognize that rest is a key part of our growth. Rest will allow us to be able to be focused on the goals that we want to do. And so the question may come up, how do I know if I'm properly resting? I feel I do give myself time to rest, but I either come out way more exhausted or I feel as if I hadn't rested. Now, you know that you are properly resting when you are able to rest without guilt. Let me say that again. When you are able to rest without guilt, that is when you know you are properly resting. We've been taught since a young age that rest is wrong, that rest is lazy, that re rest is a waste of time, and that with rest, we should actually just spend it on something else, maybe to be pr more productive. But actually, Resting is productive because during a proper rest, we are able to recenter and refocus ourselves to gain that energy back that we have been depleted so that when we do focus on the work or the project that we have, we can give our 100%. And so during this time of an impasse, learn your limitations and your boundaries so that you can properly rest and that way you are able to confidently and with much energy focus on your dreams. Now, of course, in order to learn our limitation and our strengths, we go to point number two, grow and strengthen. Now, success is often valued far greater than our failures because that means that we are obtaining our goals. But actually, in an impasse, failure is the key to the most growth. Failure teaches us what we like, what we dislike, what works for us, and what doesn't work for us. 
so that when we get all this data, we are able to make the most wise and efficient decision when needed. For myself, something I learned during my impasse was that I am definitely not a morning person. I tried waking up every single day for the past five months at 8 a.m., but I failed. And when I did fail and eventually got to a point where my body was used to waking up at 8 a.m., my brain wasn't caught up and I was way less productive than I intended. I wasn't focused. I was a little bit more lazy thinking I had more time in the day. And overall, it just didn't work out for me. And so I focused on my projects at night where I felt the most focus and the most energy. And when I did that, all my projects and the things I intended to do were able to be completed with the most amount of energy and creativity possible. For my best friend, she definitely is a morning person, so she wakes up at 6 a.m. every day without fail. But this is because she knows through a lot of trial and error that she is not a night person so by the time it reaches a certain time at night she is not able to continue on with the plans that she had set for the day so she focuses all her energy and her efforts in the morning both of us we learn during our impasses through our failures what we like and dislike and what works for us and what doesn't work for us when we learned about our strengths we are able to focus in and hone on those strengths so that we were able to be more productive but when we also had weaknesses, we are able to definitively know something that we needed to work on or something that we know that maybe this isn't what we should focus on. And so during an impasse, learn your limitations, learn your strengths and your weaknesses so that you can make a definitive decision when that time comes. And of course, when you do learn your weaknesses, another skill that an impasse teaches us is that we need to ask for help with our support groups which leads us to point number three, bond and unite. As a first child of a first generation Asian American immigrant family, I learned to be self-sufficient at a very young age. And this was due to the fact that my family was born and raised in Korea and so they didn't know the American culture. And while this independent allowed me to succeed in various ways, I became too independent to a point where I did not know how to properly ask for help. Now, this posed three main problems. Number one was that when I was learning a new skill and I failed because I just didn't know how to do it and I didn't have the proper knowledge, I just dismissed that skill thinking, maybe I'm not smart enough to learn this skill or maybe I'm not good enough for this skill or maybe this skill is not even necessary. And this is very problematic because in a growth, you're supposed to learn the things that you are not good at and you do not do well. And when I was too independent, I didn't seek a knowledgeable other so that I couldn't obtain this skill, but rather just gave up completely and never learned the proper skills that I wanted or needed to. The second problem was that because I am a very fallible human being, I had so many blind spots. And these blind spots are blind because you cannot see them yourself until someone points it out. Early on when I first got my job, I made a lot of silly mistakes because I didn't ask people for proper feedback. All these mistakes could have been easily avoided if I just asked them to look over my work, but I actually thought that if I asked them for help, then I wasn't cut out for this job. And so I did make a lot of mistakes and because I couldn't see any of the blind spots that I had. The third problem was that when I was feeling discouraged and I couldn't think of any other options when I was making a decision, I didn't know who to go for guidance and for encouragement because I thought being strong meant that you are doing it by yourself and that you are supposed to figure things out on your own. But actually, when you are in a rut and you try to figure things out by yourself, you end up going through a downward spiral. And for myself, I thought I wasn't good enough and when I couldn't think of any options, I thought I wasn't good enough because I couldn't think of any options and because I thought I wasn't good enough, I couldn't think of any more options and it just led me to a point where I was definitely burnt out. But actually being strong means acknowledging the point that you need help and finding the courage to ask someone else for help. For us, even though we can go fast, and go alone, 
it's easier and much more efficient for us to go far by going together. For me, my support group gave me the proper guidance, the encouragement, the knowledge, and the constructive criticism that I desperately needed to mature and grow to be who I am today. Just as how the baby's support group's goal is to ensure the safety and the health of the baby, our support group's goal is to ensure the success of our journey and our success. And so find your support group, whether it's your peers, your family, your friends, or your coworkers as other people, and communicate with them what you need, what are your needs, your wants, and your limitations as stated by point number two, so that they may be able to properly help you to maybe properly rest, which is point number one, or to make that next step confidently. What we thought was a sinking stone for our dreams and our goals was actually a cornerstone for immense personal and professional growth. An impasse teaches us to rest and recover, to grow and strengthen, and to unite and bond for success. So that when we finally get to our Peggy, we are able to celebrate together to the next step of our journey confidently. Thank you.